Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is my handmade lifestyle and I'm Patty. I go by Patty Magnets everywhere online and I run this YouTube channel that I call my handmade lifestyle and I do lots of different things and one of those things is knitting projects and tutorials and today we're going to look at how to make this sample. This is called um, a stitch pattern called Ripples and Ribs, and you could do any number of things with that. Um, I think it would make a really cool scarf. It definitely needs to be blocked so that you can get all of your open work stitches, your yarn overs to really show up, but what a cool scarf that would be. And I'm going to also say something else to you. I made a little bit of a mistake in here and you know what I left it in <laughs> I just did I decided that um, I'm not going to strive for perfection because that is insanity and uh, this piece when it's all blocked out would be just fine so um, I chose to left in a leave in a couple of little minor mistakes that I made um, the truth of the matter is, um, I've had a lot going on and I've only had time for knitting at night and I don't recommend that you try doing something where you have to pay attention at night. It's dark, you're tired, this happens <laughs> and that happens, but you know what? That's okay. We're still going to power forward with the sample and take a look at how to um, do it correctly. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm knitting it flat on uh, circular needles and I have a video about using circulars for flat knitting if that is something that you're unfamiliar with. I like it because when I'm finished with what I'm going to do for the day. I can just slide the work onto the cable and you know, I'm not going to lose any stitches. Nothing will fall off when it's in the middle of the cable like that. And you can just wrap your work up just like that and tuck it in your project bag and you're not going to drop stitches, which is always a nice feeling. So, um, this uh, particular pattern has a very definite right side and wrong side. So this is the right side. And this is what your wrong side looks like. So you can see it's like a, it is reverse stockinette. So it definitely has right side, wrong side to this pattern. Uh, okay, so how do we go about something like this? I'm going to um, put the pattern for you on screen so you can see it. I know that people when they get going with knitting uh, it can be a challenge to read those knitting patterns so we're going to break it down step by step and row by row and hopefully you will be able to um, become more comfortable with uh, knitting uh, from patterns uh, and you know, making these cool stitches because the stitch dictionaries out there are just full of cool stuff. And that's where I, I found this particular uh, pattern. And it definitely needs to be blocked. This is an unblocked sample because I just have it on the needles. I've been knitting it. So, uh, okay, what are we going to do? Our first thing, it says, cast on a multiple of 13 plus 1. So what does that mean? That means that each section of the pattern is going to be 13 stitches. So I wanted to have three pattern repeats. So I know that I have to do 36 because 13 times three plus one. So this is a 37 stitch cast on. I cast on my 36 stitches to give me three pattern repeats plus the extra one. I did a long tail cast on. I turned the work and then purl back. So now we are back to row two, which is where all of the, the shenanigans take place. And that's where you're gonna see that long row 
of what looks like a bunch of gobbledygook. So let's just break it down and talk about what is going on. So you'll see the asterisk first, and then it says knit one, comma, YO, which is yarn over. This is all written in standard knitting abbreviations. And then knit four, comma, and then you have knit two together twice, comma, knit four, yarn over, and then repeat from the asterisk. And what that means is then you're going to go back to the asterisk at the beginning of the notation. So essentially, you're just going to repeat where it says that knit one. So let's, let's see how that is in practice, because it can be kind of, um, I think, confusing to go from the written words or the written notation to the actual procedure. Let's translate those crazy looking instructions to the actual knitting. And you just, you know, it's one stitch at a time. <laughs> That's all you do. That's how you get through it. And as you do several rows, it will make more sense. But anyway, let's look at our instructions. So it's the first instruction is knit one. So we knit. Easy, right? Okay, yarn over. Do a yarn over. Then it says knit four. So we're going to do that. One, two, three, four. And then here's this weird thing in the parentheses. Knit two together twice. And the reason it's in the parentheses is because that indicates that that instruction is what you do twice only what's in the parentheses. So we're going to knit two together. And if you need uh, refreshers on any of these um, stitch uh, techniques, um, I have videos for those I will link over to. So okay, there's our second knit two together. Now what does it say? It says to knit four. One, two, three, four. Yarn over. Okay, and then we're up to our stitch marker. So that is the end of one pattern repeat. And then we get back to the beginning with the asterisk. So it's at one. And you really want to make sure that you keep that stitch marker where it needs to be. So you have that visual cue and yarn over, knit four, one, two, three, four. Knit two together twice. Okay. And knit four. See, this isn't so bad. One, two, three, four. And yarn over. Slip your marker. And back to the beginning, which is now knit one. Yarn over. Knit four. One, two, three, four. Knit two together twice, so knit two together. And knit two together. And knit four. One, two, three, four. And yarn over and knit one. And that's it. We made it across. How about that? Isn't that cool? Uh, and then uh, you just, on the back side, uh, the instruction uh, is to purl. So we would just 
purl every stitch all the way across. Uh, so you might have the question of, well, I'm making these knit two togethers. Uh, that's um, that's going to reduce my stitches. How does it stay the same? Well, for every decreasing stitch that you're doing, you're also doing a yarn over. So um, you have this central spine, and what's so cool is those knit two togethers together create this spine and this point. Isn't that cool? And so while well, you have a knit two together on this side and a knit two together on that side, you also have a yarn over. So in lace knitting, what they wind up doing is they uh, basically for every decreased stitch, you're going to have an increased stitch. Uh, and that keeps the stitch count the same. Unless, of course, they're trying to make it bigger, like a shawl, you know. You're either going to go bigger or smaller with that. Uh, so it's not always true, but in general, if you're doing lace knitting and you want to keep the same stitch count for every decrease, you have an increase. So they cancel each other out. So yeah, so that's, uh, that's like a basic lace knitting pattern. And if this were soaked and blocked, it would look really nice. It would also look, it would look nicer if um, <laughs> I had knitted all of the sample uh, in daylight like I have now. I have really good light. I can see what I'm doing. I am not falling asleep trying to knit. Uh, I highly recommend that you uh, try to get in some knitting when you feel fresh and not follow my example and that when you're tired because um, you're going to wind up making some mistakes uh, like I'm sharing with you here. I'm really bearing my soul. So I hope that helps. You just go a stitch at the time all the way across. And, you know, don't, don't look past the row of instructions that you're on. Just hone in on those instructions and do what it says and set your markers up to help you um, know when you should be at the end of a repeat and that visual cue really helps. I think that's, that's how I was taught to do it is to mark each repeat with stitch markers and that really um, helps with some things. So Okay, that is the video for today, and I hope that you found that helpful, and um, you know, you just uh, have to keep putting in the rows to start to get the pattern on this, um, this particular um, um, stitch, but I think it's kind of cool. I think it would make a really killer scarf, uh, so I may have to consider doing a scarf like this for myself. Um, we'll see. <laughs> okay, that is the video for today. I sure appreciate you watching. If you have questions, uh, please leave them below. I will do my best to answer them. Um, and uh, that's what I have for you. So thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.